Okay, we're going to look at two-way switching. Two-way switching is the ability to switch on a light from two different switches, two different locations. So let's have a look at what we've got on the screen. We've got our consume unit, where the power starts. We have our seating roses, our switching, two different switches for two-way switching. We have our conductors. I'm just going to have a quick word about conductors. Um, generally in the UK, we use a flat PVC, PVC for domestic wiring. Um, this is a twin there, or twin CPC to give it its proper term. And this is three cone CPC. The CPC is the bare copper conductor. This gets sleeved with the green and yellow sleeving. And that can only be used as a protective conductor. You can't use that for anything else. However, the other conductors can be utilized for different purposes. And that is sleeved with either brown, brown or blue, to indicate what its purpose is. So, go back to the main page. Okay, so we're going to follow the flow, see if we can get this light to come on from two different positions. So we'll just set our switches. Here's your basic two-way light switch, on and off. So we'll just set it in this configuration. So basic four switches will be up. And let's follow the flow and see if it gets to the actual light. So we're leaving the power comes in, goes via a protective device. In this case, it's a six amp MCB. It's 230 volts, so it's mains voltage. So good care is needed to be taken. Power leaves the consumer unit, comes into the seating rows, where there's three connections. One connection for the power in from the consumer unit one connection for the loop into the next ceiling rows, and one connection for a permanent live down to the light switch. We also have the neutral connection, neutral from the consumer unit, the neutral bar, the neutral goes on to the next ceiling rows, and the neutral always goes down to the lamp. We need a neutral for the lamp to work. And also the CPC leaves the consumer unit, and that goes to every single point on the installation. I haven't put all the CPCs in because it starts getting a bit messy of the screen. But the CPC has to run to every single point. So let's follow the flow and let's see what we've got. The line comes into the ceiling rows. The permanent line comes down the switch wire into the switch. Generally it terminates in L1. So we'll put L1 there just to so that that's live. So L1 permanent connection to the ceiling rows. That's always going to be live. So let's follow the flow. From the loop comes into L1. In L1 it can go two different directions. It can go to the common, follow the brown wire, brown conductor. That goes into common in the second switch. Goes to L1. Down the black conductor. Back to L1. Mm, it could go back up there, but that's just going back to the loop connection. Not, it's not doing any function, it's not actually getting to the switch kit conductor connections to light the light. So we've got a closed loop there, the light is not going to work, it's not going to come on. So let's just flip the switch. So this time we're going from common to L2. Let's follow the flow now, see what we've got. From the loop, permanent light comes down, comes into L1. Can't get to the common this time, the switch has moved. But it can go down the black conductor, it goes down the black into the second switch where it goes to L1. It can get up to the common this time. So it goes to the common. Common to common. This time the common is switching to L2. L2 will take the power down the switch live back to the ceiling rows and onto the light. So good. That's, that's powered up. And the light will come on. Okay, so we know that we can switch it on from here, we can switch the light on from this switch. But we've walked to the next switch, we want to be able to switch the light off now. So we'll just alter the position of the switch. So we switch this switch now. And let's follow the floor, see what happens now. The light is on at the moment. Um, power comes into L1. Can't get the common still. Goes down the black conductor. To L1, it's not gonna, can't get anywhere there. Can't get across because we've flipped the switch. Let's have another look. Can it go any other way? That's just going back to the ceiling rows. 
So by switching the switch there, we actually switch that light off. The power can't get up to the ceiling rod. So now we know that we can switch it on from here. We can switch it off from here. So what we want to do, we'll walk back to this switch again. We want to switch it back on again. So we'll flip the switch again. Let's see what happens. So from the rows, we come into L1. L1 goes up to common. Common goes to common in the second switch. Down L2. From L2, generally L2 means it's going to get back to the ceiling rows. L2, yep, there we go. L2 up to the ceiling rows and the switch. There we go. So light is on. Could also go on down L1. Goes down L1, it's not going to get to the common. But it is getting its power by the brown conductor. So depending on the configuration of the switches, the energy will flow around the circuit. And if the switch is in the right order, we get power back to the ceiling rows and onto the light. So that's the basics of two way switching. The wiring is really quite straightforward. It can get a bit complicated when you get two or two or three gang switches. So you get you get an awful lot of conductors in the switch, it can get a bit overwhelming. But generally it's pretty straightforward. You have your permanent live, comes into L1, you have your switch live, comes into L2, then you have your three corn earth cable, three corn CPC. These are known as your strappers. Um, in this case we have um, black from L1 to L1, brown going from common to common, in L2 we've got grey going from L2 to L2. So L1 to L1, common to common, 2 to 2. Switch live, permanent live to L1, switch return to L2. You wire it like that, you're never going to have any problems with your two-way switch and it's going to work. Um, this is with the modern colours, um, but um, go back a few years, pre-2006, they used to have different colours for their um, conductors. Um, the line colour was red, the neutral was black, um, the strap colours were red, yellow and blue. So you might see this, you might open a light switch and you might see this. Uh, this colour arrangement, the same principle, it's just different colours. Um, and um, if you go back even further, say to uh, pre-1977, you might see the CPC is just a, a solid green sleeving. Um, but it's a good way of dating installations. It gives you an idea how old, how old it is. When you go back even further than that, you might find no CPC whatsoever with the um, switch. Uh, so mid-50s, it wasn't a requirement to earth lighting circuits. So you might find that the you, your switch hasn't got a, an earth a CPC at all. If that's the case, it's always a good idea to get a CPC to it. But what you don't do is you certainly don't put a metal switch plate on or a metal light fitting up because if there is a fault, there's no protective conductor to take the fault back and operate the protective device. So if you find a situation where you haven't got a CPC, certainly don't put a metal switch plate on. Um, and often in installations, you get wiring to two different colours. You often see stickers on fuse board now um, asking to be cautious because the installation is wiring to two different versions. Um, you have the the new colours, the brown and blue, and the old colours. So it's very important that you do identify what the conductor does. Just because the cable's black or blue doesn't mean it's the neutral. As you see, this one's been sleeved. Uh, we'll go back to the previous illustration. This is a blue cable, but it's not neutral. It's a switch cable, live cable. And it's not, it's uh, indicated with some sleeving, brown sleeving, at the ceiling rows and at the switch to indicate that this is um, a conductor which is live. Um, a line conductor, it's carrying 230 volts. Um, so anyway, that's an overview of two-way switching. I hope it's been some use to you. I'm going to do another one next on what happens if people get the wiring mixed up. Um, if you get the, um, say like, um, you've got the say black in L1, but you take the black to common instead.
and the, and the brown and common is in N1, it's, the circuit isn't going to work correctly. So we'll have a look at that next. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, um, thanks very much. Bye.